happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays, but most of all, happy, I hope you're putting your feet up and spending some quality time with loved ones and family. As I've said before, every day is Christmas Day with Cano, but, but there are some particularly special things to share with you today. Over on Spitfire, we also use this time of year as an opportunity. Paul and I sit down with the team and work out how we can make our stuff as affordable as humanly possible for people who want to go into the new year with a kind of fresh investment in their arsenal. So check out the wish list campaign down below. There's particularly a couple of things that Paul and I have done which are really exciting. Right, there's also gonna be a fantastic, really special gift from Spitfire in the shape of something new to lab. So keep an eye out for that as well. Back to us though. I thought as a perfect kind of gift for the community, I'd create a version that I was happy with of Max's Bentley that I sampled all those months ago in Manchester. It's been a really interesting journey for me. And again, I think that these projects are so worth undertaking because you take away so much. I did loads of work on the post-production and I thought I was at a stage where I would literally just pull things into contact and it would kind of work. But the results were a bit shocking. And it all comes down to where does a note start? Now, if we just take this random G sharp two uh, from the sample sessions, it looks fairly obvious. The note starts around there. But actually, if we expand on it, we can see there's a whole heap load of stuff going on. So you could say the note starts from there. Beautiful. But if we just uh, were to go maybe to this bit here, a little, but we can see clearly that there's some information here. And I think this is my finger hitting the key, and I think this is the action being depressed before the hammer actually hits the note and makes the note resound. That, to me, is the more interesting sound, and that is indeed how I edited all of these samples to include that interest. The problem is that my performance differed the way that I would put my uh, finger on the piano, the way that these, the action would work between keys varied greatly, so the net result was something that wasn't particularly playable. So for me, this very much is a conundrum for future sample sessions. But I guess the most valuable thing that I've taken away from this process is that no matter how much preparation, no matter how meticulous you are in the production, no matter how totally anal you are in post-production, and no matter how much you test every single note as part of maybe a, a kind of QA style exercise, it's in the playing where the real implementation of the samples happens. And what has been lovely for me has been just to sit down and play it and then just go in and individually tighten notes according to how I feel they should play. It feels very much like you're almost performing a, an exercise similar to tuning a piano, but you're creating something that really fits around your playing style and how you interpret possible uses for this particular piano, which has a beautiful mellow sound. Let's have a bit of splosh. That's the thing for me. When samples have this kind of choral quality, the minute you add splosh, reverb, it just takes on this angelic beauty that I just think is so fantastic. It's been an interesting process with Max's piano, and I think that what I've learned is that really character and spirit is more important than detail and complexity. And what I decided a few days ago was to decomplicate the whole project. I made some sacrifices that I, I think are worthwhile because, well, I got there and I so wanted to release this to, to the community for the holidays. There's a link in the video description down below. The elves have been hard at work at the November highlights. 
do check out the demos that have been submitted over the last few weeks, absolutely staggering. I will be meeting some people whilst I'm out in LA and NAMM to talk about ideas regarding this kind of library idea, so I will keep you posted as soon as I have news. The marauding 13 Icelandic Christmas trolls, I think they've got a name but I can't remember, Krampus. There's so much darkness around Christmas, which was, I believe, originally a pagan festival. I thought I'd look at this month's highlights with this slightly off-centre spirit to them. Starting with South Sea Glimmer, this old upright piano spent most of its life in a church basement, which gives it an old-fashioned honky-tonk sound that I wanted to capture. I sampled this piano with a regular tremolo on octaves, through various guitar effects, create a shimmering piano texture that is great for layering, but also as an intimate glimmering solo piano sound. You got me there. That's just brilliant. That is a single sample. How absolutely beguiling is the word I would use. Again, proving my theory that it is character that we go for, not necessarily detail and uh, realism. I wonder what that will sound like actually with Max's Bentley. Well, this is what it's all about, coming together to make music. Two pianos in two totally different parts of the country brought together to create something just utterly haunting. Thank you, Jacob, for your glimmer. Fire extinguisher. So something that we experienced at Spitfire is if you call things what they are, sometimes it's a bit off-putting. So we had this range called kitchenware that no one bought. And we thought, oh, but it's just, it's beautiful and brilliant. But if you think about it, it sounds a bit kind of clonky and it's going to be a bit stompy. So the contributor here is Jeffrey Bolt. This is the sound of my trusty fire extinguisher being hit with one of those rubber-covered dumbbell things. Not mine, I hasten to add. I've used it on lots of pieces of music. Sonically, it's pretty much its own thing. It also works well when you take the attack off to get rid of the thump. Hope you enjoy. So just one sample stretched across just a bunch of velocity layers, which is great. And let's just put some delay and reverb on. Do that thing that Jeffrey suggested. Beautiful. I'd also just like to see what it sounds like with a high pot. I think with sampling, it's so often lovely to keep the whole full bandwidth and richness of the samples. But when listening to this, I think this is going to be a real kind of top end kind of belly sound. I think you can take the thonk off just with a high pass filter and then. Next up is a guitar sound, and you can never get too many of these. Thrumming Textures by Dan Keane, who's contributed a lot to Piano Book. Thank you so much, Dan. In a series of new submissions called Thrumming Textures, beginning here, I present my... So there's going to be more? Fantastic. I present my court acoustic guitar. I have had this instrument for about eight years and have never managed to play it properly. Despite that, I regularly record it, often playing just one voice at a time to form a large textural pad under my arrangements. I'd love to hear your music, Dan. The library is a diatonically sampled single dynamic layered instrument close mic using a single AKG C451B so let's have a listen to this bit of reverb 
reverb. I'd love, again, to just hear this with the top taken off, just to hear if you could also create an interesting kind of paddy sound. I'm going to put some super splosh on. Steady on, boy. Let's get rid of that. because I've been looking for a theme for the climax of this series that I'm working on. And again, you just, I'm so glad I was filming. I can actually see what I just played then. Um, and it is, that's the power of samples. They, they inspire you. That just came out of nowhere. So again, I thank you for that. But absolutely beautiful. Right, time for a submission that has a particularly Christmassy feel to it. Yes. John Mayer, who makes the most beautiful YouTube videos. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, linked below, I really recommend it. Really, again, very inspiring and really interesting take on uh, the creation of music and sound. I sampled a set of Schulmerich handbells in the entryway of my house using a U47. I love this thing of like, just not, not going to just stick a mic up here and record them here. I'm going to find a point where it really suits the sound. Using a U47 clone running through a Rascal Audio 2R preamp. Each bell was recorded with three velocity layers. I made a video describing the process, including a demonstration of how I might use the sounds in a non-traditional manner. The last two minutes of the video feature a performance utilising the handbell samples, flute and violin samples from my last video, and my felted Kawai upright piano. There's also a great SoundCloud demo to check out, so let's hear them. Ooh, they bite. So, in the spirit of Christmas, coming together, the piano book community, let's play out with a little ditty with all of these submissions. We're surrounded by division and conflict, and I think to show in our own small, quiet, revolutionary way that you can get a group of people together to share an experience, to learn simply for the love of it, is a rare thing these days. I'm hoping for amazing things to come of Piano Book next year. So thanks for your continued commitment, support, your generosity and your love. It really is something quite special that's going on here. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I do hope you get some rest and recharge those batteries for what I'm sure will be an amazing 2020. Much love from B from Oscar, from my family, to you, your loved ones, and your family. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, love you loads, see you later. Look, wag a tail. Come on in, guys, let's go.